For most students, the hardest SAT questions are circle questions. Today, we're going to go through the three main types of circle questions so you're prepared for anything the SAT throws at you. My name is Risav Roy. I'm a tutor for College Board, the company that makes the SAT. So I know what I'm talking about. Let's start with question number one. Circle A in the xy plane is represented by the equation x minus 15 squared plus y plus 6 squared equals 144. Circle B is obtained by shifting circle A 5 units to the right and 12 units down. An equation representing circle B is x plus h squared plus y plus k squared equals 144, where h and k are the constants. What is the value of h plus k? Okay, what do we need to know for this question? Well, here's the context. The equation of a circle is x minus h squared plus y minus k squared equals r squared, where the center in this form and only in this form is hk. The radius is r. Basically, you take the square root of the end. So why do we need to know this? Well, first, we need to know what the center of this circle is. You could either graph this on Desmos, or you could just know this. You just have this memorized. And that way, you'll know that the center is at 15, negative 6. So it's right here. It's in quadrant 4. What we want to do is find the center of circle B. How do we do that? Well, we're going to shift to the right five units. That's what it says right here. So we'll end up at 20 for x. And we're shifting 12 units down. So this is going to be 18. I mean, negative 18, right? Because negative 6 minus 12 is negative 18. This is going to be our new center. This is going to be the center for B. This is the center for A. This is the center for B. So the center for B is going to be 20, comma, negative 18. Pretty simple. What you want to do is ignore all of this right now. Just plug this in to your equation of a circle. What do we get? We get x minus 20 plus y plus 18 squared equals 256. Now, normally, h and k would be 20, negative 18. But the thing is that the SAT is trying to trick you. It's giving you a form that's very similar to the equation of a circle, but it's not. It's plus. Right? So you want to match the SAT's format that it's giving you right now and to switch the signs. How do we know to switch the signs? Well, let's plug in H and K. If we plug in H, what did we get here? Negative 20 and 18. We put negative 20 here. Let me delete this line first. So we have a little more space to work. Negative 20 and 18, if we put these values in for h and k, what we get is the equation for circle b. Exactly. x minus 20 squared, x minus 20 squared, plus y plus 18 squared, y plus 18 squared equals 256. Where did we get this? My bad. 144. Good thing we don't need the radius. All right. Well, that should have been 144, but it doesn't matter for this question. H plus K is going to be negative 20 plus 18, which is negative 2. Make sure that you don't get positive 2 by doing all of this work, getting to this point, and then finding HK like you would normally do. Use the SAT's format, whatever it gives you. The answer is negative two. Real quick, if you want a free tutoring session, go to theSCTmath.com. More about this at the end of the video. Let's move on to the second question. A square is inscribed in a circle with the equation 7x squared plus 7y squared plus 14x minus 28y equals 175. What is the area of the square? Okay. I honestly love drawing diagrams. I love when it's visual so I can, I can actually see it, right? Here's the diagram. A square is inscribed in a circle, meaning the square is inside a circle. Be very careful about this. When it says inscribed, it means that this first thing is inside the second one, not the other way around. Make sure you don't do a circle inscribed in a square, right? So the square is inside of the circle, 
the corners are touching the ends, but it's not going out of the circle, right? It's just touching the inside of the square. And the circle has this equation. We also need this context again. This is very important to memorize. I hope you have this memorized. If you don't, make sure to memorize it before your test. Do it now. What we need to know is that if we were to draw this diagram, this part, this diameter of a circle is also the diagonal for this square. This is going to be important because we want the area of the square. And in order to find the area, we need these side lengths. And in order to find the side lengths, we can use the diagonal. Okay, a lot of steps. We'll work through it one at a time. The first thing is we need to solve for this diagonal. How do we do that? Well, we need to complete the square. Maybe you've heard of that term, maybe you haven't. But all that means is that we need to change this right here into a form like the equation of a circle. So the first thing we would need to do, we need to divide out the sevens. We cannot have any coefficients other than one in front of these x squared and y squared terms. So we divide them out. Now, I want you to look for all of the terms that are x to the power 1 and y to the power 1. This is the coefficients in front of those terms are going to be the b values. Take this b term, these two b terms, and what I want you to do is in order to complete the square, you take that b term, you divide by 2, and you square it. 2 divided by 2 squared, this is going to be 1. 1 squared is just 1. I'll show you why we're doing this later like in a few seconds, just give me a couple seconds. Negative four divided by two, square this. Negative four divided by two is negative two, right? Negative two squared is four. So why did we do that? Well, we want to add whatever we found right here by taking these B values, dividing by two and squaring them. We want to add it to both sides of the equation. Why do we want to do that? Because then this will give us this form. Hopefully you can recognize if you have just this part, x squared plus 2x plus 1, this is a perfect square, x plus 1 squared. And this y squared minus 4y plus 4 is also another perfect square, y minus 2 squared. We want to add these terms because when we take these b values, divide them by 2, and square them, they give us the perfect amount to add to find these perfect squares. Now, since we added one and four to one side, we have to also do it on the other side. So 21 plus one plus four is 30. Okay. So now this is in the equation of a circle. So we can read the radius. R squared equals 30. That means the radius is the square root of 30. We just found the radius, which is this part from the center to one corner of the square, basically. We need the diameter, which is two times that, two root 30. Okay. The problem asks us to find the entire area of the square. So we just found the diameter. I mean, the diameter of the circle, the diagonal of the square. What we want to do is find the side lengths. How do we find the side lengths using the diagonal. For a square, if we bisect this, if we split the square into two triangles, we get a 45, 45, 90 triangle. That's a special right triangle. If you have this memorized, you'll know that for a 45, 45, 90 triangle, two of the side lengths are the exact same. What the hypotenuse is S root 2. It's the side length. It's one of these side lengths times the square root of 2. So we just solve for s by setting the diagonal s root 2 equal to what we found as the diagonal, which is 2 root 30, which is divide by root 2 on both sides and then multiply um, the root 2s out of the denominator to get it on the numerator. And what we'll get is the square root of 60. This, what we just found, the square root of 60, is one side of this square. 
to find the area, it's pretty simple. Hopefully you know how to do this part. You take the square root of 60 and square it because that's how you find the area of a square, which is 60 in this case. Okay, question number three. In the given figure, BC is the diameter of the circle. If the length of BC is equal to 120 and the length of AB is equal to the square root of 288, what is the value of BC over BD? I know this isn't technically completely a circle problem, but it's a circles and a triangle problem. So I'm just including it because it's pretty important. It's still complicated, it's still one of the hardest questions that you'll see. So what we need to know for this question is the inscribed angle theorem, which sounds pretty complicated, but all it means is that if A, is any, if a B, and C are three points on a circle, and there are lines connecting AB and AC, just like we have here. This angle A is going to be exactly half of whatever arc is created by BC. So do you see this, like, this arc right here? BC is 180 degrees. That's in degrees, that's what the arc length is. So that means A is going to be exactly 90 degrees. We need this piece of information to solve this question. I know that it says the figure isn't drawn to scale. That's the SAT trying to trick you. So you can't just like take your protractor out and somehow measure this. <laughs> the, the SAT is digital now, so you're gonna have to put a protractor on your screen. Everyone's looking at you weird during the test, but this is going to be 90 degrees. From here, all we can, all we need to recognize is that these triangles are similar. This big triangle right here, and then this little triangle right here. So whenever you see a bunch of triangles on the SAT, like usually the SAT will have questions that look like this. They'll give you something like this. Just know that it's probably like 80, 90% of the time testing you on similarity whenever you have a bunch of triangles. So what I do for these triangle, for these similarity questions is just put it here, just draw it out separately. We have A, B, D, A, B, D as one of our triangles and then A, B, C as the other triangle. Label everything. And the way we know that these triangles are similar is because there are two angles that are the same. When we have two angles that are the same in two separate triangles, those triangles are similar. That means that their sides are proportional. So in this case, D and A have the same angle measure, right? A for the big triangle, D for this little triangle right here. B is also the same angle because it's literally the, it's, it's the same angle. I don't know what else to say about that. And that means that this third angle is also the same. Angle A has the same angle measure as angle C. If we label all of the different numbers that we are given, we're going to get these two triangles. And all I want you to do here is just set up a proportion. The proportion of the hypotenuse divided by the side opposite to angle C, whatever angle measure this is, is going to be 120 over 288, right? So that's BC over AB, which is going to be the same proportion of this hypotenuse divided by X, because these two are similar triangles, right? So BC over AB is equal to AB over BD. Now what we wanna do is just substitute. When you get to this step, once you've substituted everything, just put it in Desmos. Desmos.com slash calculator is the graphing calculator that you get on the SAT. You can just put it into Desmos and it will give you the answer. The problem is, is that sometimes Desmos does, I'm literally clicking it right now. It's not giving me the exact, um, the exact coordinates for this line. So what you want to do is instead of using X or Y, make this a tilde, which is this sign, and then put anything other than X or Y. So I normally put A, and you will get your answer right here instead of having to read it off the graph. This is going to give you 
the answer right here. Use it. So x is equal to 2.4, which is equal to BD. That's our answer, right? Wrong. We need the value of BC over BD. We do BC over BD, which is 120 over 2.4, which is equal to 50. 50 is our answer. These problems were pretty hard. And if you want personalized help, if you want a free tutoring session with me, go to thesctmath.com. I honestly, I really want to help you work through this. I've helped a lot of students on their SCT math. As I mentioned, I'm a tutor for College Board. So College Board sends me students to help on their SCT math. Go to thesctmath.com and sign up for a free tutoring session with me. I'm excited to meet you. Good luck on your SCT.